As quilters, we have countless opportunities to make a new quilt. Seasonal changes, holidays, celebrations, family milestones, there is always a great reason to make a beautiful quilt. And that's what I'm here to share with you today. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and my grandkids love going camping. So what better to make than a pair of rag quilt camping quilts? And I'm excited to share this with you. This tutorial is going to walk you through making a rag quilt step by step easily and done quickly and this is the easiest rag quilt you can make it's a simple strip pattern and you're going to love it so go ahead and sit back and relax we're going to get started oh and don't forget to check out the description below there's some free downloads that you'll like a, a cutting guide as well as some free patterns for other rag quilts i want to make sure you are ready to start quilting if you haven't subscribed already please do so and give me a thumbs up I would love that let other quilters know what fun we're having here so let's go ahead and get started are you ready to make a gray quilt I'm going to show you how to make an incredibly easy baby quilt a baby rag quilt and this is a very simple process and it's simpler than most because we're using strips now we do have two layers of flannel on the front and on the back and then in the center we have a layer of batting but you'll notice in the strips, we're not doing the X's. Now here's one that I did without any batting, and it doesn't have any X's either. But when you make a small quilt like this with blocks and you put batting in it, generally you're going to put X's in here to hold that batting in place because there's nothing keeping it there. Now when we do a strip quilt like this, what we do is we sew along the edge and we we connect the batting. We attach the batting to the fabric. So as we go through and sew on each side, the batting is secure. Then all we have to do is sew our strips together and that's that. It makes it so much easier. It's a quick process and it's incredibly easy. And I'm anxious to show you how to do this. So let's go ahead and get started. I have my fabrics all ready to go. While this quilt takes a yard for the front and for the back and for the batting, I use scraps. So while this takes a yard of fabric, I just pulled pieces I had left over. A um, couple things I want to show you. What I'm doing is making this quilt out of strips instead of squares. It saves so much time. It's very simple, quick, and easy. And I really enjoy doing this, and it's a lot of fun for a baby quilt. Now, the one thing you do have to think about when you're putting a quilt like this together, um, particularly since I'm using scraps, I need to pay attention to what I have here. And you'll notice there are some directional fabrics right here. And I want to make sure that they're going in the correct direction. Now I notice I did the same thing over here. These are all right side up like that and then this one needs to be turned around. So where these are going to come together, this is the front, this is the back, I want to make sure they're all going in the right direction with the um, top of the fabric at the top of the quilt and that all the pieces following are also in the same direction. So that's something always to take a look at when you are putting anything together but a, a rag quilt and using scraps and mixing pieces it's it's easy to get things kind of turned around so just pay attention to that. Now what I've done is all these fabrics I was able to cut the full width of the fabric so these measure, I trimmed them all down to 40 inches so they were even. But I cut everything at 5 inches wide, so they're 5 inches by 40. And there's going to be 7 rows that finish at 4 inches. So remember, we're going to take a half inch seam on each side, which leaves us a 4 inch strip. And with seven rows, that's going to be 28. So it'll finish at roughly 28 by 40. And that's a good size for a baby quilt. I could easily cut it down to 36 because 28 by 36 would be perfect. But I've got the extra fabric and I fear I'm going to leave it on there. Now, when I put a row together, I'm going to first lay down 
going to make sure I don't turn these the wrong way, that I first lay these down in the proper order. Now this one I haven't trimmed off my selvage, so I'll make sure that I um, allow for that as I'm putting my pieces together. But I do always recommend that you cut your selvages off first. And I did that on the other ones. I guess I was in a hurry and wasn't paying attention. So what I did is cut my piece so it's going to fit inside the seam allowance. So when I'm sewing my rag quilt with a half inch seam on each side, the batting is going to be within the seam. That way it won't, you know, poke out with the, uh, with the rag quilting because all we want is the fabric. And so what I'm going to do is just line this up in the center and then I'm going to take a piece from the top. So I have the backing fabric right side to the bottom because that's going to be the exposed side. A piece of batting and then I'm going to put my top quilting, excuse me, my top strip on top of that. And I'm going to bring it in just a little bit because I remember I left that selvage there. But I want to bring it in so that I have a half inch from the batting to my fabric. Now, if you're doing this at the machine, you may may or may not need to um, pin this. It just sort of depends on on what your you know how it works for you. When you have three layers, I prefer to pin just because I don't want anything shifting. Now, I am going to be using my walking foot. That's going to make this so much more even. The um, sewing, all the pieces will stay in, in line where they should be. A lot of times when you're doing um, rag quilts or any kind of quilt where you have multiple layers and and you're sewing along and, and you're getting down to the end, you know, they, they can be off, they can be jagged, they can be um, skewed or stretched. And a lot of that has to do with how your fabric is feeding through. And when you have a lot of fabric, a lot of layers, and particularly when it's thick like this, you need to keep it together, number one. And secondly, the walking foot is gonna allow this top fabric to be drawn in at the same rate as the bottom fabric. Um, if you've ever done a rag quilt and you get to the end and you have all these pieces overhanging um, the bottom layer, that's what's happening. Now I notice that I I've only have about a quarter inch there, so I'm going to cut off a little bit more. And just to make sure I have my, my proper seam allowance. With my strips pinned together, I'm ready to start sewing. Um, I just want to first mention, this is five inches wide. If we were using squares, we would have eight five inch squares right here. And each one of those, we would have to go through and crisscross um, to hold the batting in place before we, we sew it together. This is one of the advantages of the strip is we only need to sew down the straight side on each edge of this, of this strip. So we're going to sew the seam at a half inch, but I'm going to come in at one inch from the outside edge. That's going to hold the batting in place, so it's not going to go anywhere. And then when I go to sew my seam, this is already almost like it's basted together. It's already sewn, and then all I have to do is sew my seam. So this is a real good time saver because sewing the edge of the strip in one you know, one swipe is a whole lot easier than doing those X's on multiple little squares. So that's one of the reasons why I like doing the strips for the baby quilt. It really is a great time saver. And then once we have all seven of them done, we'll start piecing the quilt. I mean, this goes together so, so very quickly. But let me go ahead and get this sewn and show you how this will work. My strips are ready to be quilted. I have three layers with my batting in the middle. So I have backing facing down, the right side face. Right sides always face outward. If you remember that, that's easy to, 
to remember instead of the up and down business. And so then we have our batting in between and our primary piece on top. And what I'm going to do is sew in at, I think I did about an inch on the other one. Yep, right there, that's right at an inch. And I'm just going to sew my way through. And I am going to lengthen my stitch just a little bit. I have a size 16 inch needle because I have the the extra fabric, not just on doing the strips, but when I put these together, there will be four layers of fabric and two layers of batting. And that's a lot to go through. And the advantage of the larger needle is it makes just a slightly larger hole so the thread can come in and out easily without any stress and you won't break your threads. If you're using too small a needle, that often is, is part of the problem you can have. So I'm going to go ahead and get the quilting going and we're going to chain stitch this. And I'm just going to run through this pretty quickly. And I'm going to just leave my pins there because I'm going to come right back around to the other side. And so I'm going to go down one side on all my strips and then I will come back on the other side. All right, Let's keep moving along here. And I do hold my, my fabrics together. Um, even though I'm using the walking foot, I want to make sure that they stay in place and that they feed along at the same rate. And so if I hold my fabric here, thumb on the bottom, finger on top, just like this, then that's going to help maintain that um, continuous stitching with everything exactly where it needs to be. It holds everything in place, all the layers, which works out really well. Because that's what we want to do. We need to keep everything together and let me just sort of straighten that out there. And now I have my next strip, you know, and remember I didn't have my selvages cut off, so I uh, have a bit extra and it really is a good idea to do it first because if you forget and you make a rag quilt with the selvages intact, you're going to be so disappointed because those selvages are woven so much tighter than the fabric because that's sort of what holds everything together and you won't get any raveling. Even if you clip into it, you're not going to get enough raveling and so that kind of defeats the whole purpose of all the work we're doing here. All right, so we're just going to keep going and moving along. And this is a pretty quick process. Um, pinning it ahead of time, I find, really saves me time because then everything is aligned right where I need it. And it works great. And I put the pins right in the middle so I can flip my fabric around and not have to worry about, you know, where the pins are. All right, so this is strip number two. Let's go ahead and do a third one and then I'll show you how these strips go together. And again, um, this looks deceiving, but I have my batting here. This fabric was a little bit longer and then right there is my selvage. So I just wanna make sure that everything is in place as it should be. And again, we have batting with that half inch on all the sides. And I'm going to place my fabric right on top. And we'll sew our one inch again. Now when you do a strip like this, I chose this particular size, the five inch, because that's what size most of my strips were. You could do this with a much wider strip, but what you would need to do is not only quilt the edges, but maybe do one down the center because you want that batting to stay in contact with the fabric because that's how you get that, that nice poofy look and you get that soft, cushy feeling in there. 
And if the batting is just floating around inside and it's not connected to anything, then you're really not going to get that, that quilted feeling. And uh, that's kind of what it's about. So I have to tell you, I do have some more videos coming up on rag quilting, how to do it without the batting um, and just using flannel in the middle. That's kind of a, a fun way to do it. And uh, it makes a really nice warm quilt. So there, there are a lot of options. You know, there are some basic ways of, of doing these quilts, any quilt for that matter, or any, you know, any quilt block. And we have the method, the tried and true, that we've all used for years. And then, let me get this here. And then we have, you know, the modifications. What works for us? What do we like best? What makes it easier? And so once we figure all that out, then we're good to go. And we can just make the modifications and do what we want. And then that becomes our stylized version. All right, so we've got three strips here. And I'm going to come down the other side. And the advantage of chain piecing is you don't have to start and stop so many times. And then when you go to pull everything apart um, and you cut those the stitching, you don't have the long threads to contend with. I'll tell you, that's one of the biggest problems I have on the back of my quilts are all those threads that, you know, when I'm not doing a rag quilt, even though I do a lot of um, chain piecing, Sometimes doing the blocks, you have to do a lot of short sections. And there's just, you know, all that thread to contend with. So I generally have to spend a good amount of time just trimming off the back as I go. Just to keep it clean. All right. This seems to be going really well. And let me go ahead. I'll go through this strip. And uh, we'll get this part finished. I'll show you how we're going to join up at the next end here. And now we're just going to go from there, I want to line that up evenly, to here, make sure I've got my one inch seam allowance, and I just align it right here. I measure from the center point out where one inch is, and for me it's right on that spot, so that makes it easy. Sometimes if, if you have a particular size that um, you really need to, to, to hit and, and it's not a marking here, just put a piece of masking tape. And what I do is I double the masking tape. I'll put one here and then one on top of it because then you get a little bit of a ridge and then the fabric flows right alongside. All right, so now this is the fun part. This is what I wanted to show you. We had a little more time to go through from the other direction. Did I get that other pin out? Nope. Okay, I guess I haven't been taking pins out. Um, but this works out great because the second side goes really quickly. And with it all chain piece, you just start at one end, go to the next, and then you're ready to put your pieces together. Whoops, excuse me. I got that camera up close and personal here. Didn't mean to bump it. There we go. Make sure everything's in place. All right. Let me go ahead and finish these strips, and then we'll start putting our strips together. With my strips all sewn, I'm just going to cut apart the chain stitching. You see there's just that little bit of thread that holds it together. And that's all you need. It, it keeps everything nice and tidy. And let's see, I want to make sure I've got all these pins out. I took some of them, but not all of them. Okay, just the one. So this is my last piece. I'm going to set that one aside. This is my top or the next in line and then this will go below it now ordinarily I wouldn't worry too much this as far as directional fabrics 
These elephants are twisted every which way, but it happens to be cut at a point where most of these elephants are facing this way. So I'm going to make that the top. And the reason that's important is because this fabric here is directional. Now this is the top as well. Um, so that way I can make sure everything is going in the right direction. So I'm going to put this top side up to here. If you don't have a directional, you don't have to worry about it. And you really don't have to anyways. It's just something, if you come across it, you understand what it is and you can choose how to proceed. So I let me go ahead and get this pinned. That's hard to do with the camera right here. And as soon as I have it pinned, I'll be right back and we will start sewing this. With my pieces, my strips sewn down both sides. And I'm going to now cut them apart because they've been chain stitched. And now I'm going to begin sewing them together. And I just want to show this to you real quick. Now what I'm going to do is line these up on the center. And that's simply because I, like I said, I use scraps and not all these fabrics are exactly the same. So let me line this one up and I'm going to find the center here and put a pin in. Like this, right in the middle. And remember, I want to make sure that my directional fabrics are going the right way. So this is going to go this direction. Now luckily, the next one doesn't have a direction. Um, what I just want to do is line these up and get a pin. So the little elephants are on the front and the flowers are on the back. So what I'm going to do here is put my fabrics together, my two strips, get my strips together with the backing facing each other and the right sides on the outside. And now this is where I'm going to come in and take my half inch seam allowance. Now go all the way from one edge to the other and then I'll add the next piece and this is going to be um, my third piece. So let me go ahead and put these together. I just want to show you how how this works before we go any further. My strips are all pinned. I just tuck a pin in about every foot or so just to make sure I'm on track and keep everything aligned. The front of the quilt is on the very top and on the very bottom the back of the quilt goes in the middle here and the batting obviously is inside each of these strips. Now what we're going to do is take a half inch seam allowance right along here and let me just get that thread out of the way and we're going to go all the way from one end to the other and that half inch is going to hold the strips together and then it's also going to be the seam along which we come back and clip. So we want to allow enough seam allowance that we can clip our seams to get the rag effect and um, you know hold our quilt together. If you make this too narrow then if you um, go back and clip you may not get enough fraying, or you may not have enough seam to hold it together. So the bigger pieces, I tend to take a little larger seam. Like one of my favorites to make is with the, uh, like with a layer cake. I, I like using 10 inch blocks. And I will use at probably a three quarter um, inch seam allowance because that gives me plenty of clipping room. It holds everything well together. But the other thing is um, when you have a wider area to clip, like a wider seam allowance, and your little clipping pieces are longer, you're probably going to get a little fluffier quilt. That fraying, there's, there's more fabric there for it to, um, to fray, which is perfect. 
and and that's kind of what we want now these these quilts will fray over time they they'll get softer and fluffier every time they're washed and uh so remember this is my salvage piece okay so i have my first piece done my first pair of rows whoops got a little carried away there and just while we're sitting here i'm just going to show you the clipping um i love my clippers these are spring-loaded snippers actually is what they're called and there's a couple things about it i like that it has a lock because these are really really sharp it has a, a sharp point and the blades are sharp but this keeps this um, closed so you're less apt to hurt yourself so you just give it a little squeeze and that lock comes out so you can lock that back and forth which is great now if you've ever done rag quilting or done a lot of or excuse me rag quilting if you've ever um, cut your rag quilts with regular scissors or done a lot of scissor cutting at a time you know how hard it can be you know right here on your thumb because you're you're constantly coming and going with scissors when you're using these you cut down and they stay down you have to use this thumb you have to use this thumb to lift those scissors and this area right up into your arm can get really tired um, a small baby quilt not so much but if you have a large quilt or like a denim quilt um, that's a lot of cutting and by using something like this this little spring which fell out onto the floor and I have to go find it while totally unintended that was a great demonstration of how well this spring works because it springs it's, it packs a punch but the idea is you know just using them like this you know they they cut but they don't move they they don't um they don't bounce back and that's what's so nice about this you put this little spring in here and then i close it and it just pops back so this saves so much wear and tear on your hands as you're uh, as you're snipping and it just you know you come in and you take a little little snip right there and you generally go about a half inch apart and maybe up to a quarter inch in you don't want to get right next to the stitching because if it frays down that far it could loosen those threads causing it to open um, the other thing is you know you don't want to get caught in where you're you're snipping too close and you cut a thread it does happen and I've had I've had it happen to me whoops what am I doing here? There we go. Got to hold it the right way. And if you do cut your thread along the way, then what you just need to do is come back and just sew it. You know, I'll sew like an inch on either side. So let's say I came through here and I cut a couple spots. I'd start back here and sew over it so there's enough there holding everything together. So let me go ahead and get some of these strips put together and I'll show you where we are. With my first two strips sewn together, you can see I have my seam allowances here. The batting is just getting caught in the seam, which is what we want. So that holds it in place. Plus this um, extra stitching that we did is also going to keep that batting from bunching up or moving around just in case that because it's only caught by a little bit just in case that pulls out um, over repeated washing or stretching then this is going to hold it which is great that's what we want so this is the way it looks this is the back and you know we've got our our seams here our stitching to hold the batting we have our seam down the center and it just it adds a nice look it adds the the quilted look so you get that that puffiness from the the quilting with the uh, batting in here because it's also very popular to make quilts without batting and i've got two of those coming up in the very near future so I just wanted to do this first and kind of show the traditional method and then uh, then we'll do some of the others so now I'm going to add my third row and so this is the way my quilt is going now remember we want to go in the right direction and the hearts are going to go this way I want to make sure that my flowers are going in the right direction 
and I'm going to put my hearts right here. Let me find the center and I'm going to pin them right there and let's see actually I'm going to pin this side here and I took this center pin out so let me go ahead and redo that actually I'll just crease it and I'll line them up well it doesn't want to crease let me just put a pin in there. All right, now these flowers have to be facing upward. See, like this. And so, luckily, I checked because I pinned the wrong side. I'm going to go this way. And so, this and this will go together. Oh. No, I did have it the right way the first time. I forgot that when I have it face down, it's going to fold up. Okay, so here we are. This is what it'll look like. So there are my hearts, and I'm going to have the pink row. This will be sewn together, and then if I flip this over on the back, you can see that these are all going in the in the right direction. So, so far so good. All right, let me get this row together and uh, and show you how it's coming. And here I have three rows all sewn together and it's looking really nice. We're going to come back and we'll uh, trim these, clip these so we'll get our ragged edge. But in the meantime, we're just going to leave it like that. And I really like how the back is coming out. Um, I'd love to make a rag quilt for me just out of these prints, this pretty uh, floral. I really like that. So yeah, I'm really happy with this. So let me go ahead and get the rest of these rows together and then I'll show you where we go from there. Anytime I'm quilting, I find it easier to work in small sections. So what I've done here is I have my three strips I put together, then I have the other three strips for the other end, and my middle piece. Since there's seven, I have an oddball. Um, just sort of waiting to be connected. So I'm going to take this now and attach it. And I want to make sure that my directions are all in the right way. So I'm going to put these together with the back fabrics facing and the outer fabric for the front are on the opposite sides and then that is going to line everything up perfectly and I'll do my half inch seam because everything has been quilted so now I just need to put everything together and uh, we will be on our way now you can see I did do some pre-clipping. Again, I find working with the smaller pieces easier. Now, a baby quilt is not that big that it's difficult to manage. But when you get to larger lap or, you know, into bed size rag quilts, any quilt, um, it's a lot to handle. So I like to do sections and then when I put the sections together, it just seems to all go together so much easier. And, um, it's less cumbersome when I'm sewing. And then I just have the larger pieces together at the end to finish off. So that, you know, we all find our methods as we're sewing what works best and how you are able to handle different situations, the way you, um, you know, lay your fabric, stage your fabric. I always have my ironing board right next to my sewing machine, and that's where I have uh, all my pieces that I'm going to be working on or that are partially finished, so it's within reach. And then that way, if I need to do a, you know, a quick press on anything, I have uh, my iron right there as well. So... We'll just go ahead and finish this row, and then I'll add the other section of three, whoops, I'll get that right there, the other section of three strips, and this is finished. We just have to do the outer edge, and we will be good to go. All right. 
right. So now I have my section of four pieces. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. My apologies. And then I have the section of three. So this is all going to line up side by side, just like this. And then I'll have all seven rows together. So let me go ahead and get this sewn and I'll pull it out of the machine and we'll take a look at where we are. All the strips are sewn together. We've got our clipping done on the inside. And the last thing we're going to do is run a stitching line around the entire edge of the quilt. First, what needs to be trimmed. So I trimmed this just to even up those edges. And now I'm going to trim this side. And what you do is you just find your, your shortest piece. And like I said, if you pre-cut all yours in advance to the exact same size, you probably won't have to do the trimming. But like I said, because I use scraps and different fabrics, they were different lengths. Even though I did do some um, advanced trimming, not everything came out the same. So my shortest lengths are these right here. And I want to line my ruler up along those three. Now the other thing to make sure that the quilt's going to be square is to, let me just lay this out nice and flat, is to line these up and make sure that you've got, you know, some pretty straight lines. So here's our seam, which is, you know, pretty much in line with the half inch. This one lines up on the quarter inch. So we're doing pretty good. This lines up really well. So that tells me that we are nice and square and I can cut this. So now I'm just going to go across the edge here and this takes care of my selvages and everything is good to go. The last thing, and of course a thread. Oh my gosh, is there not always a thread? <laughs> of course. So now what I'm just going to do real quick is I'm going to sew around the edge and as I'm sewing around, I will open up this seam and I will just sew, I want to open it up, let's see, there we go, and just sew around all the way at half an inch. And I'll tell you, I do it twice. I do go around and do it a second time because that's the only thing holding these edges together. And if this gets pulled and tugged on, um, and even washing a lot, they're you know, these seams might want to come apart. So by sewing around twice, it it goes, um, it, it just makes it a lot more durable and it's a quick sew. It's, it's not hard at all. And then all we're going to do is cut around the edges. And so let me go ahead and get that done. And then we're going to talk about how to wash and dry this in order to get your frayed edges to pop out beautifully. And I've done the double seam, the double stitching around the edge at about half inch, but I probably went closer to five eighths, just a little more than half inch all the way around. And then I started clipping the outer edge. Um, the clipping is real easy. I, I showed you on the, the rows how we did that. When you sew the outer edge, you want to make sure that your seams are open. But I do want to show you a couple tricks on the clipping. First, with your open seams, uh, looks like I left my clippers. All right, I'll use my scissors here. What you want to do is come right up next to your seam here and clip. And you want to go every quarter to half inch. And you only want to go maybe halfway through your seam allowance because you don't want to get too close to that seam because it can pull out. Now, what I do, let me just go ahead and do this one real quick is I will come to a seam. Let's see, do I have one that I left? Most of these I, I cut as I went, but I'll, I'll cut here and here, right up close, and then I'll hold this together, and then I'll just clip the whole thing down. And that just works out really well for me, especially if I'm sitting and watching, you know, a movie or something, then it makes it, makes, you know, quite quick to do. Now, the corners, I've seen a lot of people do a lot of different things. What I don't like about the corners is when you get a big old knot. So what's important is that you allow the fabric to ravel well to give you the full fraying, but not the knotting. 
So the first thing you do is you snip off that corner. You don't need to take off much. You can see here, what is that maybe? You know, a little quarter of an inch piece like that, okay? We're going to take that off. Then I'm gonna hold it this way so we can see really well. We're going to come in from where we clipped, where this straight edge is meets this straight edge. And we're going to snip in here and here. But you don't want to go down so far that you cut that corner piece out. We want that corner piece to stay. And if you get real ambitious, you can hit just another little tiny clip in there. And that just allows those threads to loosen up and pull out. Now, the other thing, whenever you have a seam like this, you want to come right up next to the seam because you want those threads to be loose. And where the threads are sewn, they are not going to loosen up. So that means we also need to do this side. And I don't go quite as far down. Let me see, right here. And I'll come just a little, little notch in there next to the threads. And basically what that does is it just loosens up that corner so those threads, you can see they're already popping out. So by the time they're washed, a lot of this will come out, but you won't have the knots. So let's go ahead. So inside here, see right here where we have this. Now I don't backstitch these, these uh, stitching lines, but where the stitching line comes all the way to the edge, let's look at right here. So we want to make sure we're cut crossways on the inside of the quilt, but on the outside of the quilt, we're going to do it a bit differently. We're going to come right up to the seam here and cut there and there. Then we're going to keep cutting. Don't make the mistake of cutting this direction on the outside seam because then it's not going to be raveling on the outside. I, I prefer it this way. I guess I, I shouldn't say that that's a mistake. Um, it's a preference, but I just get really, you know, good fraying this way. And then you can come in if you need and, and put an extra one. So we, we have this seam because that's not going anywhere. That's sewn. That's going to stay put. And then we just sew across. So let me show you. Let's go to the other corner. We'll do that one more time. So we're going to go from corner to corner. We're going to cut off a bit. Then we're going to come in at an angle on each side. We can snip in the middle if we want. We're going to sew or cut next to that stitching and just keep on going. We're going to cut next to this stitching and keep on going. And then we're good. And then again, right here, right up next to the stitching on the quilt side, snip right up close to where the, uh, the seam is. But here, you want to cut it in this direction. So essentially, you always want to cut towards the seam, um, towards the seam that's joining. And that's, that's just, you know, has worked really well for me. So I think we've got that. So I'm going to finish the corners. I'll go ahead and run this, uh, run, do all the clipping on the rest of these real quick. I've got to find my clippers. I'm not sure where I put them down, somewhere here in my sewing area. And then I'm going to wash this. So let's talk about that for just a minute. Um, this is the before. Now this is just two layers of, of flannel. Now here's another quilt that's two layers of flannel and you see how nice and full this one has a border um, I have a, a class online that I teach how to make borders for your rag quilts I just think it adds so much fun to a quilt um, but it also stabilizes that outside edge that's always one of my fears for quilts is that the edges might come apart so I bind mine really well and on the rag quilts I always put a border um, I just think it, it holds it a lot tighter. So this with just two layers of fabric, and they're both flannel, two layers of flannel, you get a pretty, pretty good frayed edge here. Now this has probably only been washed once, because I know it hasn't been used yet. Um, this is going to be a, a little gift, a little doll 
quilt because it's it's pretty small but I just love the colors and you recognize this print that's the same one that we have here um, one that I like and I just wanted you to see what you can expect for that fray edge and you'll notice that of course these we have the offset seams oh you're gonna love the next video doing offset seams that makes life so easy but yeah because I used the small squares I didn't have to do the, the crisscross which makes it very easy um, on this particular quilt. When you get into those bigger squares, there are times you do need to make the X. But this is what it'll look like. Right now, though, this is where we are. I'll wash it and I'll show you the, the final quilt here in just a few minutes. And down below, I have a link for you. There is a free cutting guide as well as rag quilting tips that you can download. Um, it's a two-page PDF. One's all about clipping. It shows uh, diagrams, instructions, how to do this, and then just tips on different kinds of rag quilts um, that will help you to get the best results possible. All right, so moving on. Let me go ahead and finish this, get it washed, and I'll show you what it looks like. With all the clipping finished, it's time to wash and dry your quilt in order to get that nice ragged edge. Now, when you do the washing, you want to put it in um, a full cycle so it gets some good agitation. That's going to help remove the extra threads. Plus, I put in an old towel, or if I'm doing a couple quilts, I'll do two of them at once, just to balance out the washing machine so you don't have any issues there. Then when that's finished I'll take it out and give it a good shake and then I'm going to put it in the dryer when I put it in the dryer I give it about 15 to 20 minutes and then I'll empty the uh, the lint trap because those first few minutes are when most of the threads are going to be pulled out of the fabric and you want to pull those out before the lint trap gets too full and then go ahead and, you know, start your dryer up again and finish it, and it should be fine. If you have a particularly large quilt, you know, you can check it again if you feel the need, but I find just doing it once is fine. And then, of course, emptying it when you're finished. And that works out really well. Now, the last thing when you are pulling your quilt out, now this is right out of the wash and dryer, and it turned out really well. Now the big thing is I will look for um, long threads that I need to trim off. And there are a few, but for the most part this all turned out very well. One thing that you do want to watch as you're sewing is to make sure you clip your threads all the way back. Because if you leave a um, thread that you're sewing with, that's going to really stand out. It's not going to fray or mix in with these uh, these other edges. Instead, it's going to protrude out and stick out in all different ways, and it's going to be very evident that it's there. And so I always make sure that those threads get cut as I'm sewing. Now, I think this all turned out really well. Look at how nice those corners turned out. Um, the way we uh, trim them, cutting off that little corner, now there's a little bit there, but even that, I, I probably wouldn't worry about that little tiny bit because it's pretty minuscule. And the more you wash it, the fluffier this tends to get. You'll lose a little each time. After your quilt comes out, you may notice that you get some, some lint, some um, strings and threads adhering to your quilt. And after a couple washes, that disappears. Um, you can get a lint roller initially if it's for a gift and you want to make it nice and pretty. But generally, you know, I'm not adverse to running it through a rinse cycle a second time and uh, running it through the dryer just to get a lot of that uh, that excess taken off. And that's just the nature of a rag quilt. That's, that's what it does. You know, we're cutting it up. We're um, getting those threads to loosen up. And some of them are going to stick because flannel um, allows fabric to adhere to it allows thread it sort of catches it i'm really happy with how this quilt turned out i think it's sweet the colors are pretty i i just you know it's a nice little baby quilt and it it'll make some little baby happy and i'm excited about that now let me show you some uh, full-size pictures here and here's the finished rag quilt baby size it's adorable the colors are sweet and i just think those strips are perfect for this quilt and I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a thing or two and that you're ready to try your own rag quilt. And 
please make sure you subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you if you haven't i would love to have you supporting my channel i appreciate that very much and have a wonderful rest of your day it's been my pleasure sharing this with you and i look forward to seeing you in the future